John Pello is the CEO of the Canadian Council of Christian Charities, a very important organization in Canada. We'll talk about that in a moment. And he's also someone who, on his own initiative, has created a, a one-man presentation in uniform on leadership lessons from Vimy Ridge, one of the most famous battles of all time from the First World War. Welcome, John. Thank you. It's good to be here, Jim. You also have 10 years banking experience. You, yes. Uh, you've, you've, you've done a lot of interesting stuff. Yes. Uh, one day I just woke up and I wanted to have more impact on people's lives. And so God has uh, led to a change in my career. Yeah, you, you pastored a church for a while. Yes. And, uh, yes. and then uh, the Four Seas came along. Uh, I want to talk about the, the First World War, of course, but uh, tell me first of all about the Four Seas. I know that Crossroads is uh, a member, I think, in good standing. A member in great standing. <laughs> in great yes. standing. It's yes. the Canadian Council of Christian Charities. What, what, what's it all about? Uh, we were founded in 1972 by seven individuals from Christian ministries who said, we need help, uh, not with frontline ministry, because they know how to do that. Yeah. It was the support ministry, so the, the legal and the finance and the fundraising and governance and so on. And so they created uh, Four Cs as an organization to support Christian ministry uh, by providing advice, uh, education, and so forth. It was uh, founded also with the wish that overseas missionaries would have medical insurance, that they would have retirement uh, benefits, and so forth. And so over the years, uh, Four Seas has grown to about just over 3,100 Christian ministries that are members, and 168 of them, including uh, Billy Graham, uh, World Vision, Compassion, uh, Back to the Bible, and of course, Crossroads right. have a special membership status with us as certified members. That means that you abide by nine standards uh, that we have, and that you open up your books for us to come in and do an inspection. Um, every year we, we check on your status, and every three years we actually send someone in to do what your donors can't do. Uh, we, we actually come in, we go through your board minutes and, and other records to be sure that you are treating the donor's money fairly. So the, the big message, and we have a, a logo, a stamp, a, a seal of accountability that uh, Crossroads uses. And when donors see that, uh, they, they know they can give confidently and generously because of the oversight. We have, we have the stamp yes. right there on, on the screen right now. Yes. Seal of accountability. Yes. 3,100 organizations are now members. Yes. And that's all yes. Canadians? Uh, all Canadian All ministers. Canadian or organizations. Yes. Well, that's terrific. Now, what's up with this? You're, 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 you know, you're a former banker, you're a former pastor, you're heading up the four seas, and yet you've got this passion mm -hmm. for uh, our veterans, and uh, especially the First World War. How did you conceive of this idea of leadership lessons from Vimy Ridge? Well, I just fell into it. Uh, my father did not know much about his uh, family history, and so I just started, I'm a bit of a genealogist, so I just was studying family history, discovered his father had served at the front line in World War I, and uh, I knew nothing, I was not uh, in school, they didn't talk about World War I very much, so I started reading books and finding out, and when I came across the story of Vimy Ridge, I thought, and I was, as, this time I was doing leadership uh, training, and I read this incredible story of, of a battle that was hugely significant to Canada. Our national identity was really yeah. formed at that battle. Yeah. And the success was due to the advanced leadership principles uh, of Arthur Curry and Julian Bing. And they were so far ahead of their time. What they did back in, in 1917 is just as applicable and leading edge today in this century. Now, Arthur Curry and Julian Bing were both knighted, right? They were both sirs? Yes, yes. Were they knighted before the fact or after the fact? Uh, Julian Bing was knighted before the fact, I believe. Uh, he later became Governor General of Canada. Right. Um, and Arthur Curry was knighted immediately after the Battle of Vimy Ridge. And he became the first Canadian to ever lead Canadians in battle. And he had an unbroken string of success from, from uh, Vimy Ridge onwards. Under his leadership, Canada never lost a single artillery piece, never lost an inch of ground, and never failed in a single assignment. He had an absolutely perfect record as commander of the Canadian Corps. Why was he so good? Was it just intuitive, or was it training, or a combination of the above? It was, uh, now he was a Christian. Yeah. Uh, it was the value, and Bing was as well, yeah. and they both valued human life. And so they would not ask a man to do anything that the equipment could do for them. Uh, they came up with new battle tactics to preserve life. So, for example, it was the Canadians who decided that uh, the front line would be replaced every few minutes by a support line that would leapfrog over it. So you always had fresh men fighting at the front so that uh, you didn't, you know, when you get tired, you make mistakes and you get killed. Uh, they, uh, they, changed, they created a new uh, military doctrine called reinforce success, not failure. Up until this point, 
where you were having your greatest losses, where you were being slaughtered. The idea was put more men in there. Who knows, you might break through. And what they did was they said, forget that. We will reinforce success wherever we're breaking through. Put more people there and we'll gradually encircle. The men loved them because they cared for the lives of the individual. Uh, there are many other things that they were doing as well. well you know, I want to talk more about this, but why don't we take a quick look at uh, just a little snippet of uh, your presentation. Uh, and and you're, sure. you're, you're playing the role of General, General Arthur, Curry. Arthur Curry, World War I Lessons from Vimy Ridge. Let's take a look at this. Now, I know there are many of you who will be wondering, what can a World War I general possibly have to say that would be relevant to a 21st century audience? Plenty. The conditions that we faced in 1917 were very similar to the conditions that you face today. It was a time of rapid and dramatic technological, political, and social change. We were still getting used to the idea of radio. Airplanes were still in their infancy and just being used by the military for the first time. We were getting used to automobiles and mass production. Empires were fading. World power was sh shifting from Europe to America. And in Canada, in 1917, the same year as Vimy Ridge, women voted for the very first time. It was a time of dramatic change, and it was a change on the battlefield as well. We started the war using the same tactics and equipment that had served us well for generations. We quickly found out that the introduction of the airplane and water-cooled machine guns made much of what we did obsolete. And so we realized we had to take the principles of warfare and apply them into the modern times. And the generals who did so were the generals who were successful. Uh, several years ago, just before he died, I interviewed Pierre Burton. I had mm -hmm. him for a whole hour on my uh, eye to eye show. And I had just read his book on, on Vimy Ridge. Uh, and here was another Canadian who had a real passion for what mm -hmm. happened. And he saw Vimy, as you did and do, as a, as a real uh, signature moment for Canada. Yes. Now, what was it about Vimy? I, I know that the French and the British, I think for three years, had tried to take this ridge. Yes. And, and, and they, they were unsuccessful. The Canadians did it in eight hours? Eight hours they did it. In fact, in 32 minutes, the entire enemy trench system fell to the Canadians. It was, it was a, just a massive success So, for so us. was it because of their strategies uh, that um, uh, they were able to do this when the French and, and British couldn't? Or, or, or was it just timing? Or, or, or was it no, all it, of the above? No, it was very careful preparation. For example, the Canadians were the ones who realized that the weather conditions affected the accuracy of the artillery. We, had, we factored the, the wind and the barometer readings. We had electron screens attached to our guns so that we could measure how fast the uh, shells were firing. So we had the best accuracy of artillery of any army in the field in World War I. The other thing was we uh, invented sound range we buried microphones all over the battlefield so as, as the shells whistled overhead uh, within three minutes we could tell you the target we could tell you the kind of shell it was how big the gun was and where the gun was located the accuracy of the guns with the accuracy of the sound ranging meant that in the first seconds of battle within probably I think the first 30 seconds uh, we destroyed 82 percent of all enemy artillery in a flash it was gone. Now you said there were microphones? Yes. Yes. So th this would be an audio um, um, engineer's nightmare. I mean, so they have to have string uh, wires. Yes, they did. Yes, they so did. So this is part of their preparation. It, it took months of preparation, but that fit their philosophy of the value of human life. You do not wait. There were no expendable soldiers in the Canadian Corps. They would do everything to make sure that human life was preserved, and and the the preparation was incredible. 